Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I'm coming to you with a team full of absolute heat. You already know that we love to show the lower tier mon some love over here. And if you're into that type of thing and haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that button for me. I'm on my way to 300k, and the support really helps out. So without any further nonsense, let's go ahead and get ourselves into the match. So my opponent is going to lead off with their Gabite. This thing is actually a huge threat with Eviolite, and I'm kind of afraid of it. Of course, I lead off with the absolute legend that is Carbink, and I've got myself a pretty decent matchup here. So listen, the Bink is here to do three things. Essentially, we set up screens, we set up Stealth Rock, and we whip some ass. I'm going to try to see if we can get it to do all three, but it's kind of a tall order. Anyway, this thing does end up being a lead uh, Stealth Rock Gabite, as I do kind of expect, as we kind of just trade our Stealth Rocks here. And at this point, I've got a couple options. Of course, this thing does have the Earthquake on me. Even though I'm floating literally 9 feet in the air, I can still get hit by the Earthquake, which is exactly what happens. Um, I could have potentially switched into something like the Weezing and tried to burn it, but I opt to go for the Reflect here. That's going to guarantee that I can at least take another one. And at this point, I can either Moonblast or set up the Light Screen. I opt for the Light Screen here as... You notice I go first, and that is because he predicted me to switch into that Weezing and goes for the Dragon Tail. Uh, which is actually perfect, does not affect me because I am a little fairy rock, and that's actually pretty solid because now this allows me to both set up both of my screens and hit him with a Moonblast. So I really just need some chip on this thing. Honestly, my team doesn't really handle Gabite that great. I do have a Cramera in the back that has the ice coverage, but in general this thing's just super bulky and kind of just a threat. So the chip there is honestly exactly what I'm looking for, and at this point I decided to just let Carbink go down. Listen, at 35 HP, I'm slow as hell and I'm not going to be super valuable for the rest of the match. But I did get up my Stealth Rock, I also set up dual screens, and the team is looking pretty good under the support that our little Rock fellow friend has got it. So, now I get myself a little Revenge Switch action, and I decide to go into the Cram Ram. This thing is a crazy-ass Pokémon, I'm not going to lie. Um, I do have the Ice Beam, I'm basically just going to go for that. I know that they have a couple different things uh, that could potentially switch into a Surf, like the Cacturn with like a Water Absorb. Um, but I just decided to go for that Ice Beam and just kind of see how they handle the threat as they end up going into uh, Kamala here. So, this thing, I'm convinced the Pokemon is the Log and the Koala is just the Koala. The, shine, the only thing shiny on this Pokemon is its friggin' Log. I, I'm a conspiracy theorist, whatever. Anyway, this thing does take that Ice Beam extremely well. And that tells me this thing might be Assault Vested. I don't know how bulky Kamala's usually are. It's been, you know, a few generations to, since I've messed with this thing a whole lot. But... Uh, I'm expecting this thing to do something like a rapid spin here. I know that this thing could potentially be a spinner. I go into Dust Buster and feel him up just to make sure, and yep, yep, that's a that's an Assault Vest right there, as they actually end up going for the U-turn, likely expecting the switch, and now they get a better matchup against my Furret. So, in comes, back again, the baby Garchomp, and at this point I'm thinking, okay, either he goes for like something like an Earthquake here, or he goes for a Dragon Tail. Regardless, I'm going to go for a Tidy Up. I feel like... The battlefield's looking messy as hell, and even though I worked hard to get those stealth rocks up there, I'm just gonna just swipe him away. The DLC has given us the buff to Furret, which is Tidy Up, which is gonna both get rid of both sides stealth rock and give me an attack and speed boost. So, you already know the rest. Now that I've used Tidy Up, I can actually use Last Resort considering I only have two moves. So they went for a crunch, and that likely tells me they were expecting the Weezing to come in, but I'm just super grateful that they did not click the Dragon Tail there, as it was a little bit risky going for that Tidy Up. But, uh, at this point, I'm going to go for the Terra. I feel like, you know, Furret needs literally all the damage he can get, so I go for the Terra Normal. A, a Terra Normal boosted, plus one attack and Silk Scarf boosted damage, this Gabite is going to get sent into the next dimension. The Last Resort is a super fun strategy, and uh, Furret is able to actually pull it off uh, we do take care of the Gabite, we touch him, so we get hurt with a little bit of rough skin. Uh, but we tough his diamonds over here, baby. Furret is finally set up to potentially see what we can make happen here. So, the Reflect is going to wear off. And while I'm faster than everything on their team on paper, what I do not outspeed is priority. And in comes Basculin here. Now this thing potentially has the Aqua Jet. It does go for this Aqua Jet, but Dust Buster is an absolute beast. We're able to live it with three without the Reflect. And a last resort absolutely sends that thing to a fish fry. So we eaten some bass tonight. And look at Furret just out here taking care of business. Honestly, you love to see it. Furret is actually much better now with Tidy Up. But still, this thing needs you know all the help it can get. So in comes a Raichu. Alolan Raichu is actually slower than me with my plus one speed boost. However, we're actually going to see this thing go first. It is able to kill me with a Volt Switch. And that tells me this thing is Choice Scarf and Furret goes down after its little mini massacre there. But we did at least benefit from Furret taking out a few Pokemon, plus now we know that this 
Alolan Raichu is Choice Scarf. And that's actually pretty valuable to know because I would have outsped if, you know, I was, uh, if it wasn't Scarf. And honestly, Last Resort pretty much kills their entire team, so that would have gone crazy. However, you know, it's always likely that there's one Choice Scarfer, and we're able to at least scout that out. So, now on the empty switch, they go back into Kamala. And I'm thinking, you know, Trevenant's a pretty good Pokemon to try to set up here. So this is a Trevenant that is based around its ability Harvest, and it has a Citrus Berry. With a Leech Seed and full defensive with Horn Leech Recovery, it has access to Poltergeist, which is great damage. This thing is honestly a pretty difficult Pokemon to break. So, they decide to get on out of here. Kamala does not want much to do with this thing, and they're going to bring in Volby to dance around looking like a funny little guy and avoids the, avoids the Leech Seed because of his cool little dances. And... I honestly do not know what this Volbeat wants to do to me, if I'm going to be real, so I'm basically just going to stay in here and go for a Poltergeist, but they decide to U-turn, potentially trying to grab a pivot and get some momentum. There's a lot of Volt Switch and U-turn on this team, which is honestly really scary. They give them gives them great position if I do switch, but they're going to end up bringing in the Cacturn here. So I go for the Poltergeist, and honestly what's great about this is, while it's not going to do a whole lot of damage, I actually am able to see that this thing is Choice Specs. Uh, I attack him with his own glasses, and it doesn't do a great amount of damage. But I know that a Dark Pulse is coming. And honestly, it would be way better if this thing was a physical Cacturn, because I essentially, I switch into the Weezing here. The reason for that is because Weezing, looking at the remainder of the matchup, kind of just isn't the most valuable Pokemon for me. So I essentially bring this thing into a sack. And I do actually take a Dark Pulse, which was kind of surprising. Specs, um, Cacturn, I'm able to live that. And I'm just going to go for a Sludge Bomb before I go down. But to my surprise... Disco Balls is actually faster and able to kill that thing with a Sludge Bomb. So this Cacturn was absolutely not running a plus speed nature and probably not a whole lot of speed investment. So Weezing's able to take care of it and what turned in, was started as a sack turned into a nice little kill from my dude Disco Balls over here. So we're feeling good, we're feeling fast, but certainly not faster than a fucking Raichu on a surfboard. So I'm basically just going to let this thing go down here as they do end up knocking me out with the Volt Switch. Uh, Choice Scarf Raichu about fast as hell. So, you know, Disco Balls and his non-existent legs not outrun on that thing. And what's good about them killing me with that Volt Switch is that now, of course, I get to see what they want to bring in. And that's going to be Kamala once again. And honestly, I'm feeling pretty good with the amount of chip that I have on this thing to the point where I'm wondering if two Choice Specs Surfs from Cramorant is going to do the trick. I want to go into the Metacham and kill it with a close combat, but then that just basically drags in the Volbeat, who I have a bad matchup against. Uh, and then I fall behind a little bit. So what I decided to do instead is go back into the Trevenant. I feel like this thing has not liked this matchup and it can't really do much other than knock me down to my Citrus Berry. So I'm essentially just going to go for a lead seed here to play it safe as they do U-turn and that's going to knock me down exactly the point where Trevenant gets a little bit hungry and we bust out the old Citrus Berry. Gives us some health, some health back. And the beauty of this set is that uh, we should be able to essentially harvest that back. And then if they, unless they're able to knock me out in one hit from this range, uh, I'm going to heal back up. So, uh, they go back into the Volbeat. Again, I still don't really know what the hell this thing wants to do. Uh, I know that with the Prankster, a lot of the time, they're going to pull out some shenanigans. So, that is essentially what this thing is going to do. As I at least land the Leech Seed this time, which is nice. So, we get you know, a, little bit of, a little bit of damage and some health back. So, I'm honestly expecting this thing to Encore, but there's not really much I can do here. I decided to go for the Poltergeist in case it does not. But, of course... Yeah, Prankster will be 10 out of 10 times is going to Encore on a lead Seed. So I'm honestly fine with that because that basically means Trevenant gets to heal up once again. And while I feel like this little Volbeat can't really touch me, I kind of obviously don't really have an option to stay in here. Uh, so I'm actually going to, you know, get some health back from the lead Seed. Plus I, har I harvest my Citrus Berry once again, which is amazing. Uh, so that's good to know that if I get knocked down at that point, we are Gucci. But I'm going to switch back into the Cramorant at this point, And I'm thinking I'm going all out on the Cram here. I feel kind of good. Uh, that I can basically do, again, enough to knock out the Kamala. And this thing is actually going to end up going for the Taunt here. So it's actually an interesting set. If they Encore you into a move like Leech Seed and then Taunt, I'm actually then forced to go for a Struggle, which is kind of hilarious. But we take a little bit of Leech Seed from the fella, and I'm free to start blasting off some Surfs because, again, the Cacturn is taken care of. They do not have uh, a Water Absorb switch in here, and they have to basically U-turn on out of here. So... Uh, Kamala is going to be their best answer to this thing, and like I said earlier, it is going to be Assault Vest and just basically bulky as hell. The Gucci Basket does come back in, and uh, I'm still, again, feeling confident in the cram over here. I've got my, my Choice Specs on, I can see clearly, and uh, we go for the Surf. So, it does actually do enough for a two-hit KO. I actually come up out of the Surf with a fucking fish in my mouth, and he hits me with a Sucker Punch, 
but Cramorant's ability actually gives him a little bit of chip damage and not quite enough to knock this thing out, uh, which obviously doesn't really matter because that allows me to go for another surf, and then this time I come up with a Pikachu in my mouth. So Cramorant is just the goofiest little fella because if you come up with the the uh, the Barrascuta, you get basically chip damage. If you come up with a Pikachu and they hit you, you get uh, damage plus a chance to para. Regardless, I feel bad for the little Pikachu over there because Raichu comes in and I literally have his son in my mouth. But my back is against the wall here a little bit as of course the Raichu is able to finish me off. But I do throw his son at him and I do a little bit of chip damage before I go down. So hey, that's kind of fun. And uh, he does come with the Volt Switch which is going to bring in his last Pokemon which is that Volbeat. So I know that Trevenant does have a good matchup here as long as I don't get Encored into some nonsense. And I'm mainly just worried about that Raichu in the back. I do still have the Choice Scarf um, Metacham, but I decide to go into the Trevenant here, and essentially I can just Poltergeist, and this thing really can't do enough damage to knock me out from here, which is going to put me to my Citrus. And Trevenant's basically here to do exactly what it's supposed to. So I go for that Poltergeist as they actually Thunder Wave, and end up I end up avoiding it, which is amazing. So this thing actually does not literally have much to attack me with. But I attack him with his own boots. I'm able to just literally see this dude's entire items. And uh, I just throw this thing's boots at its face. And that does take care of the Volbeat. So their final Pokemon is going to be this Alolan Raichu. Who just has a little bit of chip damage from the Pika that I threw at him. But uh, I'm thinking if this thing has Psychic, it's its best answer here. Um, but I'm going to end up going for the Poltergeist. After considering going for Protect just to see what this thing wanted to do. It's actually going to end up using its Terra here. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. It ends up being Terra Fairy. And that is kind of bad for me because now he doesn't take super effective damage from the Poltergeist. And uh, now we basically just get to see what this thing wants to go for as it ends up being Terra Blast. So it's going to go for that Terra Fairy uh, Terra Blast and Trevenant actually eats that shit up for breakfast. And what I actually end up having for lunch is just another Citrus Berry. So that is pretty sweet. We are well fed in a nice looking tree over here where we're able to just then fire off a Poltergeist. And I have underestimated the power of Trevenant once again as the Poltergeist does take care of of the Raichu, and that is going to essentially finish off the game. So, honestly, a pretty goofy match. Anytime I mess around in these low tiers, it's honestly just a really fun time. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed as much as I do. I'm planning on making some more kind of teams like this. And uh, let me know what you guys would like to see, and I appreciate all the support. I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.